Cinema 4D R21, the caps and bevel system gets a much needed facelift and it makes creating beautiful text a snap. Let's check it out. In this video, I'm gonna be covering one of the big new updates to Cinema 4D R21, and that is caps and bevels, and how it totally can change the way that you work with not only 3D text, but generator objects like extrude and sweeps objects. Now, if you wanna follow along with what I'm working on, be sure to download the project files. The links will be in the description below. All right, so let's dig into the new caps and bevels in R21. And I'm gonna use a Motex object because that's kind of like the most obvious use case for the new caps and bevels. But keep in mind that you can also access these same cap controls and cap updates in extrudes or uh, sweeps here. So I'll cover that a little bit later, but just want you to be aware that the new caps and bevels are not just limited to Motex, okay? So I'm just gonna delete those two. But let's go ahead and dig in here. And one of the biggest things is, you know, if I wanna have just a rounded bevel, this is kind of the default uh, bevel shape. I just go in, just click and drag and adjust this size. And you see we have a nice rounded bevel and it's applied to the front and the back. Now you might think like, oh, whoop de doo what's the big deal with that? Actually, that's pretty huge. Because if you remember in R20 and below, let me just jump into R20 here. If you wanted to add a nice round bevel to the front and back of your uh, Motex object, you have to go into the caps. And remember the start and end caps were separated and you'd have to go to fillet cap on the one, fillet cap on the other one. And if you wanted to adjust each of these options, you'd have to do that for each of the start and end. So it was a lot of just manually changing things, making sure that everything was kind of matching. And there's just so many settings that you had to take care of. Meanwhile, in R21, they're fused together, they're mirrored. You can control both your start and end caps at once and get really nice bevels really easily, okay? But if you wanna have those separate bevel controls, you can still separate them by just checking on the separate bevel controls and you can go knock yourself out by applying different bevels on your front and back end. So that's a big like quality of life kind of uh, enhancer there. Uh, but one thing that's really cool is we have the size here, we can adjust the shape depth so we can actually get like more of an inner bevel kind of going on. As you can see here, nice concave kind of deal there. We can also adjust the segments. And again, this is gonna control both the segments on the front and back. If I just go into my uh, garage shading lines, you can see all those segments there. And there's the shape depth. I can get this really nice concave bevel or you know bloated out uh, convex bevel. A lot more control there. Uh, another cool thing is the ability to get a step type of bevel shape. And let me just get out of garage shading lines here. And here you can see that we have all these different segments or steps of that stepped bevel shape. So we can go like really cool, like art deco-y kind of thing and adjust the size here. And you're gonna see that we have this uh, new way to calculate the uh, bevels here. Let me just go and grab this SSAO so we can really see what's going on here. But we got all these really cool stepped bevels and again you can control however many you want and again get really cool like art deco-y kind of stuff but you're going to see as i crank this up we're actually not going to get all those weird janky edges that you used to have to watch out for in the past and when i say janky edges i'll show you what they look like because what is new in r21 is the ability for the new caps and bevels to avoid self intersection so if i check this off you can see all these points kind of going out all over the place. And this is how bevels were calculated in older versions. But with this new calculation, we can crank up this bevel size as much as we want and we're not gonna get those weird kind of jaggy points jutting out all over the place. So let me just jump back into R20 and show how limited the fillet types were or the bevel shapes were. So I just showed you how you could add like a whole bunch of different steps. In old versions of Cinema 4D, you had one step or two step and that was it. 
you couldn't do three, couldn't do four. So again, just kind of, it's kind of amazing how limiting the old bevel system was in comparison to R21, where you can crank up however many steps that you want. So steps, really cool. Uh, one of the most powerful features though, uh, as far as the bevel shape goes, is this curve. Now, right away, you can see that if I crank up this size all the way, we get this really nice, chiseled text which is huge in its in its own right because chiseled text was something that you would have to model from scratch and actually one of my very first tutorials was how to actually do that and there was a whole bunch of steps and you had to know some modeling techniques but nope not anymore you just basically crank up the size all the way it can go and there you go you got beautiful chiseled text again both on the front and the back and uh, that's with just the standard linear uh, Bezier curve in this curve editor, but one of the coolest things about this curve editor is that I can command or control click and add points and just kind of click and drag here, get this like wavy kind of thing going on and check that out. We can actually control the bevel profile by just clicking and adjusting all these points in this little spline editor here. Okay, so really cool stuff. So maybe we wanna do something like this. Let me just grab this point and maybe delete that point. But we got this nice little kind of wavy thing. And if we up the segments, we can smooth that out a little bit too. So we can adjust both the, the size of that bevel, how far that goes, something like that. And you can see what we got going on there. And we can also adjust the shape depth as well. So how far out that bevel is going. So really cool stuff. The ability to be able to do something like this was previously not uh, able to be done at all uh, unless you just kind of used a sweep object and made your own uh, profile spline or something like that. So this just is massive as far as uh, control goes. And one of the cool things that was added to R21 was if you right click in this uh, area here, and let me actually just move this on up. But if you right click, there's these new functions that you can uh, execute in the curve editor. And the first one's double. And if I just do that, you can see it just doubles up that curve. Let me just go ahead and undo that. So it just doubled up this entire curve that we had. Okay, so let me do that again. So let me right click, go to double. You can see that my curve just kind of repeated. Let me go ahead and undo that. And let's check out the other new function, which is symmetrize, say that five times fast, but symmetrize basically mirrors your spline. So you can way more easily create very complex bevel profiles, which is really, really cool. So in addition to, you know, being able to have full control over what your bevel profile spline looks like in this Bezier uh, spline curve editor, we can also load up a bunch of handy dandy presets. Isn't that fancy? So we'll go ahead and load up some presets. You can see all these really cool preset uh, shapes we have. Uh, one of the nice things is we have the ability to do these like inner bevel, inner chisel kind of things. And we can adjust how much we want uh, of that by using the shape depth and the size. So really cool kind of like inner bevel shape we got. Let's go and check out another preset. Uh, here is uh, shifted bezel, again, you can see the profile curve spline in this little curve editor, but just really great stuff. Let's go load up another one, let's do a stepped. And this, the difference between this one and just the other stepped one is we have, if I just cr increase this, we have these nice curves. And when you apply reflections, uh, reflective materials to this, this is really gonna catch the highlights of your your lights and stuff and, and have a lot more smooth edges to catch more of those nice reflections and catch the light. So really nice stuff that you can go ahead and do that. You can also save your own presets. So if I right click and reset the default and let's just say I got something like this and I'm like, yeah, that's really cool. I'm gonna use this a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click save preset and sure, that could be me. And this could just be, you know, test and hit OK. And then when you go into the load preset, zoop, there we go, test. I can easily apply that. Let me just reset the default and actually show how you can apply that. 
So here we go. There's the test and there is my saved awesome bevel. I should have named it awesome bevel. Uh, I missed my chance, but there we go. We got this really, really cool bevel shape going on. So this is huge. Uh, I just want to show you how big it is because again, if we jump back into R20, there's absolutely no option to create your own bevel uh, profile shape, okay? You are limited to just these fillet types here. So huge updates to the caps and bevels here. Uh, again, one of the biggest things is this avoid self-intersection because before you'd really have to watch how big your bevel size was. And again, if you didn't, you'd get these janky edges. So let me just go and show in our uh, 20 again. So if I just go ahead, let's constrain and make these bevels really big. Again, there is no way to avoid that. You'd basically just be limited to, you know, uh, you know, I'm limited to this. Like I'm limited to five centimeters because any more you'd get these, this intersection. So it was so limiting the uh, old cap system. So I just, I love showing the old way and the new way because it is quite an update to this whole cap and bevel system here. But again, I wanna show how this isn't only limited to Motec. So here I just have some paths that I brought in from Illustrator that I'm gonna use an extrude object on. So again, this could be your own logo, whatever you wanna do. But here I have this like cool Game of Thrones style school motion uh, logo. And basically if I wanna chisel this, have that really nice cool medieval chisel, fancy, you know, Harry Potter chisel kind of stuff. All I have to do is up this size, adjust the shape depth. Again, if I go into my garage shading lines here and just kind of see a good like profile uh, view here, you can see I can make this kind of like a concave chisel, uh, chisel or a convex chisel. And again, uh, let's just up the segments here, make this really nice and smooth. So there we go, a uh, really nice chiseled edge. Let me get out of this garage shading lines, but that's, that's how easy it is to get this really nice chiseled shape. Now we have some thickness to our uh, extrude here. So let me just go ahead and get rid of it. Whoop, let's not do that, but just give it a, a, a movement of zero. So zero extrusion, and you're gonna see that that just kind of flattens everything out. So a little gotcha is that if you want really nice chisel and you want it on both sides and basically no extrude at all, okay? So what you're gonna have to do is just put in a very small value like 0 0.001, hit enter, and now you have this really nice sharp chisel with no like extrude depth or anything like that. Again, just putting in that very low value and now you can you know adjust this however much you want. Okay, so really, really nice stuff. Be able to have so much control now over your uh, chisel or bevel shape. So we can get, if we get the shape depth of zero or even if we change this to curve, we got this nice chiseled curve. Let's move this on up. And here we're gonna have to adjust the shape depth here to 100%. And now we got this really super sharp uh, chiseled curve. And if I command click anywhere in here, we can control this own, like our own concave kind of inner chisel uh, going on here as well. So just so much control, really huge. Uh, this is something that I wish I had a long time ago when I worked on 3D text all the time when I worked at a news station animating NBC logos all over the place. So just so, so much uh, flexibility and control here over your bevels. Hopefully you see a lot of people making really cool beveled text and, and, and logos and stuff like that now. Uh, but the one thing I also wanna show, if I go back to my uh, initial example here, is I got this wacky bevel curve going on. Remember that was my awesome curve that I saved. Uh, I want to show that, you know, this is, we're using Gotham as a font, right? But what if we choose something else? Like, let's do something wacky. Uh, let's do this felt pen for no reason whatsoever. And you're going to see that this still holds up, okay? So the great thing about uh, the, the new bevel feature is that this works and holds up well no matter what kind of uh, font you're using, okay? So again, because of that, uh, avoid self intersections, we're not gonna get any of that jankiness happening on our uh, geometry here. So we can have full flexibility to use whatever font we want 
uh, without needing to, you know, be worried about like, oh no, is this font going to work okay uh, with with this chisel or this bevel or anything like that. So here is, uh, you know, a, a font with serifs on it. And you can see that this holds up very well. If I, let me just reset this to default. And if we want to make a chiseled uh, serif font, we can do that very easily. Again, not having to worry about any of those janky edges that we, we would typically have, okay? So this is just, again, so much flexibility, not limited to whatever type of uh, font that uh, you might want. Uh, really just the, the possibilities are really endless. Uh, and let me, one of the, one of the fonts that I really like was this croquette, really nice stuff. And if you get this nice little, very graphical kind of font, and if I just adjust the size, we, we get this really nice chisel just automatically. And I rendered a bunch of different examples of this as well uh, for this tutorial. But again, if I want just uh, no extrusion whatsoever, go to the depth. And if I hit zero, again, it's going to flatten everything out. But if I go 0 0.001, that's the secret sauce right there to get this really sharp razor sharp edge on your chiseled text and all that good stuff. So another big uh, quality of life enhancement as far as caps go are with sweeps. So uh, one thing I would do a lot is I'd sweep a circle along a uh, another circle, another path, another spline. And what if you just wanted nice rounded edges on this? So what I'll do now with the new updated caps and bevels is just crank this all the way up to 100. In voila, if you just crank up the segments too. So if we had very low segments, all we'd have to do is just crank this up all the way to maybe, you know, 15 segments. And we get this nice, smooth, rounded edge there. Now, this might, again, might not actually make you go, wow, that's cool. But let me show you again. Let me show you how you had to do it before in older versions. So here we are, R20. Again, if we wanted to add nice, rounded bevels, we'd have to go to fill a cap fill a cap, and then we have to guess how big our radius could be without going with this, getting this janky uh, result there. So you'd have to really eyeball it and be like eh, 111 and then really crank that up and then 111 here and then really crank that up there. And again, like, no, it's actually not 111. We need to bring this back a little bit. Maybe it's 82 and we'll bring this back to 82. Uh, what if we want to change the uh, size here? Well, we have to then adjust this as well. And we got to go change this and then change this again. And hopefully this illustrates how much of a pain in the butt this used to be. If I go ahead and I adjust the radius here, make it a little bit bigger. I just make this value even bigger here as well. So like 150 and voila. Like so huge time saver when using sweeps. Uh, again, with extrudes, same kind of thing. Uh, just anything with this caps option uh, going on here. So, uh, you know, lofts, there's also caps with lofts. There's also caps with lathes. So all these generator objects that create geometry based on splines have this new updated uh, bevel feature, which is really, really nice. So again, we can even go into this sweep. Say we don't want round, we want curve. We can just go in here and just start adjusting this however we want and just do some nice uh, modeling here, <laughs> which I don't know what this would actually be. But uh, yeah, just something like that. Maybe it's a crayon. We got a crayon going on there. So we got the crayon, little tip and it's bent, right? So we'll just delete that and we can have a nice little crayon shape. Look at that. Adjust the shape depth here. You make the circle a little bit bigger. So there's our, our crayon that we can then go and, and adjust however much we want. Adjust the shape depth here too, and get that the model of the type of shape that we want. Now, you're gonna see why we have this little line here, and that's from this break fong rounding. If I uncheck that, you can see we have a much smoother unified kind of shape going on. So a little uh, helpful thing to know about that, breaking the fong rounding there. And bevel outside just kind of thickens everything, as you can see. Uh, we'll just uncheck that. So a lot of really cool flexibility. Again, maybe for this, 
uh, we want to adjust the end cap uh, differently. So we'll go and separate bevel controls and we'll just add some nice roundness, uh, roundness to the, uh, the end cap there. So really cool stuff, so much more flexibility. Hopefully this kind of drives home a lot of the changes and how, you know, if you were poo-pooing caps and bevels before, maybe this opens to your eyes to like, hey, actually this is a really cool feature. So one other thing that's really nice about caps in general in R21 is how it's handled when you make an object editable. So in the past, there used to be a create single object in your caps tab. And if I just jump back into R20, you can see this create single object. And basically what that would do is if you made this editable and then made this uh, child, and then if you made this other object editable, you would have a fused cap in extrude. Now, if I went ahead and undid that and unchecked this and made this editable and then made this other extrude object editable, you'd see that the caps and the rounding would be separate objects. See how it explodes out like that? Nine times out of 10, you would not want that kind of behavior. You want everything to be fused together. So in R21, that's the automatic, that's the default functionality of making an object editable. If I make this editable and then make this extrude editable, you can see it's already creating this as one single object. Another area where this is super handy and this is something that would annoy the heck out of me is if you made a cylinder and you made this editable, right? And you wanted to say, do a loop selection and move this up or down, that would actually be separate, okay? So let me go ahead and show you how that worked before. So this would drive me nuts. You'd make this cylinder editable, okay? You'd go and do the same thing I just showed you. You'd grab that loop selection and you're like, I just wanna move this up. What the heck? <laughs> so the default functionality in older versions of Cinema 4D is that the caps on a cylinder would be separate. So you'd have to do something like select all of your objects, right click, go to optimize, then do your loop selection and then move this up or down without having that cap just kind of be disconnected and fly off all over the place. So again, a lot of quality of life enhancements in R21. And another thing you're gonna notice, and this is just a general uh, Cinema 4D R21, is the primitives have different segments by default. So they're a lot less uh, dense as far as subdivisions. As you can see here, we have a lot less subdivisions for, let me just grab another cylinder here. So we have the height segments of four, rotation segments of 16. If we go and check out what the default cylinder settings were in previous versions, you can see that it's a height segment of one and rotation segments of 36. So just some subtle things that you'll see as you start getting your feet wet in R21, but that default uh, create single object being a default functionality is a small thing, but a big uh, workflow enhancer. We don't have to, you know, deal with uh, separate caps flying off or anything like that. So one last thing I want to cover that's a really cool enhancement is in the past, if you wanted to apply, say, a different material, like let's just make a, a red material here, and you wanted to place this on just the rounded bevel of your object, you'd have to go on that material and remember what the selection was. So R1 was for the front cap rounding, okay? And then if you wanted it to actually be the front cap, that's actually C1. And if you didn't know that, uh, you could easily be really confused as to like, how can I isolate and apply materials to just specific areas on my text? Well, in Cinema 4D R21, there's this new selections tab that is very helpful for if you ever forget uh, what those different uh, polygon selection letters and numbers were, okay? It's like the secret secret codes to uh, getting these materials to certain parts of your object. So if I wanted the start bevel to be a selection, I'll just check that on. That's gonna create the polygon selection. And then now all I'd have to do is drag and drop that into that selection, voila, we have the R1 selection. Let's go back to our Motex. Maybe we'll uh, do shell. What's the shell? Well, the shell, if we drag and drop the shell in there, is the actual extrude part of your object. And in addition to, 
you know, having all these different selections available, there's also these edge selections as well, okay? So we can enable all of those uh, start and end cap edges to be able to do whatever we want with that as well, okay? So cool little enhancements all over the board that add up to being a major new feature to R21 that hopefully you get a lot of use out of and you enjoy a ton. So caps and bevels, pretty dang cool, right? We're gonna have more tutorials about some of the other cool new features in R21, like field forces and the Mixamo control rig in the near future, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Now, if you wanna keep up to date with all the latest news in Cinema 4D and the MoGraph industry in general, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.